We are back with JJ, and right now we are going to remove some confusion. A lot of this is about, not just about going out and grabbing any board, you know, based on features. It's about finding what features meet your needs. Mm -hmm. So we're going to break down all of your different uh, segments here, mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to start with this one. So you ready to do this? Yeah. Um, I think right before I grab, though, the Mainstream Series board, yeah. which kind of comprises the majority of our lineup, I think a very important thing that first and foremost we want to set the tone for is, is that there are certain going to be design consistent points that are going to be present across any one of these boards, regardless right. of which segmentation you purchase. So even though we're going to talk about, you know, the kind of quote unquote user that may be more intended to focus on this board versus this board, this board to that board, right, is that there's going to be a certain level of functionality, whether it's inside the UEFI, mm -hmm. whether it's feature sets like Fan Expert 2, um, or you, you know, are the capacitor or the, the VRM layout, there's going to be things that we're going to talk about that are going to be holistically part of our entire design philosophy regardless. Um, even things like overclockability from every single board. You guys came out to our technical workshop. You got to see right. everything from our value dash A SKU mm -hmm. all the way to the maximum six extreme. We showed 4.8 gigahertz overclocking because overclocking is not a compromise point based on either the pricing or the segmentation. It really, like you said, comes down to the feature it's set. It's a feature set. Feature set of what you're looking to define. All right, so I see four different motherboards here representing four different lines. Um, what do we have? We have the mainstream series. We have the a tough series, the ultimate force. We have the ROG series, and then we have our WS series. And so each one of these essentially is a segmentation that while there's going to be a huge amount of design consistency between all of them, um, they're pretty much segmented to specific usage models. It doesn't mean that there's not overlap, right? Could you use a mainstream series board for WS purposes? 100%. It's entirely doable. But are there going to be specialized features and functions on WS that really be benefit somebody that's doing content creation or productivity? Yeah. Yeah, in each line now we have a full family, correct? That's correct. So uh, within each one of these, you're going to have usually multiple boards. Historically, the Tough Series has usually only been one board per chipset, um, but for this generation, we've expanded upon it. We now have a, an additional board as part of the Yeah, we've got the Griffin now. We do have the Griffin board. Cool. Um, so I think we can start off with the mainstream. This is uh, one of my favorites. I love this board. It's got everything. Yeah, this is the Deluxe. You know, this is kind of like an Asus stalwart, right? I mean, it's uh, pretty much the board that comes to define a lot of whatever we're doing for that chipset. We tend to try to incorporate all kind of the key cornerstones mm -hmm. of meeting that. And what really the mainstream series is supposed to represent is kind of the core ethos of what Asus is bringing to the table in terms of quality, innovation, performance, reliability. All those points mean that into that. But when we come down to what is it supposed to be intended for, it's really actually kind of like a jack of all trades. We're designing it for somebody that's going to want maybe a basic gaming box. We're designing for somebody that does productivity. We're designing for somebody that wants to do uh, general SMB or Soho based environment work, right? So it's maybe just an everyday quote unquote business PC. It could be a little bit of everything, but we need it to be able to do everything well, right? It needs to have robust connectivity, whether it's things like integrated and wireless, right? Whether it's 811N or like this board, 811AC. It maybe needs to be able to support Thunderbolt. It needs to have advanced fan control functionality per every single header. It needs to have, you know, extensive SATA connectivity. So it really kind of comes down to the board is that if maybe you don't necessarily need to fall into a specific niche, right? Maybe you're not a specialized gamer and you want more gamer centric technologies, or maybe you're not tough like you're super passionate about, you know, cooling and monitoring and specialized points of, you know, monitoring and reliability then the mainstream series really fits the bill for you. So this is kind of the, the go-to board for regardless of what you're gonna be doing, it'll serve your needs well, but there might be more specialized boards that really give you additional value if you're somebody that's really active in those type of segments. Now the software, um, I, w I wanted to mention this because you said earlier, like 50% of the users actually use your software and I feel like that's really, really high. Uh, I am going to be using AI Suite 3, mm -hmm. and you can use that on the entire line, is that that's correct? That's correct. AI Suite 3 is consistent through the entire software set, and that's something that, uh, you know, it didn't start off at 50% for sure. You know, I mean, uh, very... Well, people or, are really leery when they see software. They're all, most people think, oh, no, bloatware, and it's like, sure. I don't want to install this. It's the last thing you want to install on your system, but, you know, we worked really hard to essentially take it from the antithesis of what it was, where it was like kind of like Batman's utility belt, and it, it had six different things that all looked differently, that all had their individual resources, yeah, and had different levels of Processes, yeah. right? And now we have a really tight layer of integration that we've had now for multiple years, and we keep refining it. And at the end of the day, we're trying to add real value mm -hmm. to it so that when you install it as a user, you want to have it on your computer because it's giving you things like the Fan Expert 2 or USB 3 Boost or USB Charger, things that you won't be able to do without that software. You yeah, know, Fan Expert is for me, it's like the replacement for any fan control. I know there's people out there, especially some vendors that are going to be like grabbing their head and saying no, but it really does replace your fan controller. If you guys want to check out the video on that, uh, the software, Fan Expert, AI Suite, you can click on the link here and we'll give you a full description of uh, all the different software. Mm -hmm. All right, ready to take a look at the Tough? Yeah, sure, definitely. Put this one back over there. 
And uh, what, you know, the last note that we'll also oh, yeah. ma make on, oh, no, I think it's okay, uh, yeah. on the mainstream series is that uh, there's going to be a huge amount of new UEFI options that we're going to also cover um, that we're going to wall show them on the mainstream series board. They're going to be applicable to every single one of the boards that we're talking about. So this gets also back to the point of saying that we have a huge amount of design consistency, right. whether it's in AI Suite 3, the UEFI, or even concepts of design integration like, you know, the capacitor choices or stainless steel, you know, backplates and yeah. things along those lines. A lot of our audience does tweak, so you guys are probably going to want to click on this link here on the screen. It's going to take you to the UEFI uh, overview video. Yeah. So All right, tough. Right here, yeah, we've got tough. You know, tough usually just stands apart right off the bat because mm -hmm. it usually it's got an entirely different ID. So the the design uh, is it's it's much more aggressive and it's got a very specific kind of styling. Not every single board usually represents and has the thermal armor, mm -hmm. uh, but actually tough. Very interesting enough. If you uh, want to go ahead and take a hold of it, really was actually born from our WS division. I can lift uh, weights with this thing. It's like I can. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's definitely beefy with that fortifier and design you that we put play, on the yeah. back. Yeah. Um, is that it was born from our WS division where a lot of people would ask the question, hey, I love your deluxe boards, I love your ROG boards, but maybe I don't necessarily need all those specialized features, right? But I still want a board where I'm really focused at having a high level of reliability and quality. And I, they tend to also have a specific interest in cooling and in monitoring. Mm -hmm. um, so that's when we essentially decided to design the Tough series. So it was focused at being more simplified in terms of maybe not taking every single advanced level of functionality, um, you know, like maybe integrating wireless or NFC support or, you know, more specialized features that we might introduce every generation, mm -hmm. but really making a board that just is solid, it's reliable, it has extra validation to really have a, a, a good sense of confidence. And it was also meant to align for users that are looking for a longer life cycle in terms of their build. Um, you know, I'm on the bleeding edge. I like to upgrade literally every chipset cycle, yeah. but we get a lot of people that say, I want to build a system and I want it to be three, four, five years. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing that's special about Sabretooth, right, is that the Tough line offers a five-year warranty. It's the only other mother, it's the only motherboard line on the market that gives you a five-year warranty. I think Wendell here in the, in the studio, um, yeah. you're using, I think, Sabretooth uh, motherboards from every generation. Pretty much. Back to the beginning, right? Yep. Yep. And yeah. in, in this building, there are Sabretooths from every generation running. And uh, that's a classic example is that, you know, people just want a great board. Yeah. It's got a great amount of flexibility, great performance. And there tends to be also usually a specific focus on cooling and monitoring. Mm -hmm. So we'll have things like our thermal radar, which is not even the armor, but we have, you know, hardware sensors on the motherboard. Yes, certain pots. That, spots yeah, exactly. That detect real-time temperature uh, and do advanced things like that. So if you're somebody that just wants a long-term build, great connectivity, reliable performance, um, you know, really good component choice, that's going to be a key example. You know, even when you get these boards, you'll see there's like a little certificate of reliability because we individually rate things like the yeah. chokes, the capacitors, the MOSFETs, and things along those lines. Now, you guys have included a thermistor with this, right? Yeah, this one actually comes with uh, three optional temp sensors that you'll be able to integrate onto the board that allow you to measure temperature points anywhere you want. So yeah. independent of the hardware sensors that are actually sprinkled throughout the motherboard. Yeah, and if you want that with the Griffin, you pick up the Griffin armor and you also get the thermistors. You could run it anywhere. Like yeah. There's these little headers on there and you can run that to the inside of your chassis or like you said, you can put on on top of your hard drive and then you can all run that into the AI Suite 3 software and yeah. you can essentially go ahead and monitor those points real time and even have your fans adjust based on the temperature that's recorded. Monitor from your that. graphics card. I mean you yep. can monitor anything and not even not just the motherboard. That's that's what I think is really cool about this. Yeah. It's not just the motherboard that you can monitor. Yeah, you have a huge amount of flexibility. So really great choice. And just like we talked about the mainstream series, while we don't necessarily focus in on overclocking for the Sabertooth line, this is 4.8 gigahertz, no problem, just like the Deluxe would be 4.8 gigahertz. Mm, depending um, on the CPU, of course. Yeah, of course, depending on CPU margin. But in terms of the hardware design, the UEFI, the component quality, you can feel confident. It doesn't matter which one of these boards you're going to buy, you're going to get great level of performance. It really just comes down, do you want the feature set of that? And of course, when we cover more of the product mm -hmm. line, we'll go into more of the features on the Tough. Let's talk about the uh, workstation. Stay. Okay, we have the workstation. Like you said, the monolithic design. I actually like the design on this one. It's I, I really like it. It's kind of kind of gives me almost like a two thousand and one kind of yeah. Odyssey kind of vibe to it. WS is a very interesting division. It's one that sometimes people forget that we offer, or they don't necessarily even know that we offer. But you know, a huge amount of people nowadays are very becoming very active in, in prosumer level activities. And what I mean by prosumer, you could be doing something like this. You could be doing video at home. Right. You could be doing audio production, video production. You'd be taking an SLR and doing photography, right? And you're doing more professional levels of usage. And what that really means is you're probably running your system consistently. It could be four, five, six, ten hours, right? Mm -hmm. And just like you go and you see a hard drive that might be rated from, let's say, Western Digital for 24-hour operation versus a normal hard drive, which actually is not designed for 24-hour yeah. operation, there's differences. So an example might be like the WS series has official Xeon support. It's our only motherboard line that officially we validate and verify Xeon support. That also means that you have ECC memory support. 
normal users maybe don't necessarily need that, right? They you don't run always, a home web server with this. Yeah, you don't necessarily need that. But if you're looking at maybe rendering for 10 hours, right? Do you want to take that likelihood that maybe the video might drop out or maybe you could have a bit failure and then all of a sudden it tanks everything? You know, so that's something to kind of consider. But the great thing about this chipset is we offer multiple boards within the WS line. This one gives you the flexibility, though. You could be running a Xeon, but you could also run a K part. So you got overclockability, mm -hmm. but you also even have the flexibility of running a true workstation oriented based system. There's also going to be things that extend uh, to other aspects of validation, like option ROM support. If you guys are people that are interested in things like complex cards like a, a raid card mm -hmm. professional capture cards pci ssds what people don't realize is things like that they actually have a bios um just like a like a motherboard or just like a graphics card and some of these can be really complex to understand and so we have to take these and we have to redesign the board and make it work with these very complex based devices i mean nobody wants to have to go out and buy like a 600 hundred dollar raid card plug it into a board and not have it work or initialize um, so that's a really big keystone point on the WS series along with usually there's also going to be more flexibility on storage such as this board right here there's a lot it, of ports there's 10 ports but these ports are actually very special these are feature uh, as an example this one has our SSD caching 2 controller mm -hmm. which means you can take actually up to three SSDs and aggregate the performance mean meaning keep increasing the performance as you add SSDs to a mechanical bar hard drive so if maybe you're doing so like, you can have three SSDs cache a single a single mechanical, mechanical hard drive so like that's one four terabyte drive in there and just cache and you can keep it. improving the performance wow. so if you're doing maybe like high uh, bitrate 1080p video 2k yeah. 4k video you're doing uncompressed raw based photo work you need the capacity of a mechanical hard drive but does it hurt in terms of being able to significantly improve the read performance no right so you get that kind of best of both worlds benefit um, plus you get things like dual NICs, which is important in terms mm -hmm. of how you might be connecting maybe one's for the internet and the other one might be for like your local network right yeah uh, so or if you're you running like a, a managed NAT. switch or something like e that you exactly can just use dual two high performance yes yeah, dual high performance yes they're intel NICs. exactly hundred then and not only regular they're they're actually the server grade intel NICs. so um you know a lot more robust functionality but you still keep a lot of that design ethos that we have where like i said things like mm -hmm. fan expert 2 usb 3 boost you know usb charger plus all those things you still get that you still get the great uafi options but it's going to be hey if you're somebody that's interested in productivity linear workflows content mm -hmm. creation there might be a better feature set here that's targeted for I you. I know you've got me thinking about one of these. It's a, it's I mean, a great thing. First, I'm like an ROG all the way, but now you're like, oh man, I edit, I edit so many videos. Now I'm like, ah. Yeah, I mean, even if you take a look at the inductors, yeah. these inductors that we put on here, these are the same 60 amp rated Blackwing chokes that we actually have only on, the only other board that has that is the ROG series motherboard. You know, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much highest in the industry. Yeah, that's it? the highest in the industry. 60 amps rated a piece. I mean, these things are outright beasts in terms of the power output capability. Um, but they also, also, and they also look kind of cool. I mean, they again, look, that's subjective. But yeah, they look very cool. I, I mean, but even the little wing thing design actually helps to improve thermal dissipation properties because for WS, it's about efficiency also. So, I mean, you know, it's crazy. You could have a 4.8 gigahertz DDR2400 with a four way enabled setup on this almost, which would be like running a maximum six extreme, except the extreme is going to be different where it's going to have maybe even more tweaker or yeah. hardcore gaming related functions. Uh, so once again, you know, is there a crossover at the end of the day? Segmentation only probably exists inside of our marketing department, but you know, we really do take the time to listen to the community as you people and say, hey, what features can we integrate per each model that really make it more useful for you? Yeah, again, yeah. it's finding out what you need and, and getting the exact thing for your needs. Yeah. And Ready for the... Uh, I think the beast of the beasts, right? Yeah, let's talk about the ROG. ROG, yes. So uh, ROG is really special. I mean, uh, we just actually uh, recently went through our five-year anniversary for the ROG motherboard division. Um, so it's it's been a very long-growing period for us to continue to evolve what we feel is the absolute kind of best-in-class motherboards on the market um, when it comes to enthusiasts, real true hardware enthusiasts uh, and overclocking and gaming related focus. And what we mean by that is essentially is that we're gonna continue to offer features and functions on here, which are really for kind of the cutting edge of users. Mm -hmm. So an example might be something like that little OC panel that you have there to the, uh, you know, to the side of you. That's an external real time overclocking controller and monitor, right? You can monitor your temperatures. That's this one here? 
Yeah, yeah you go. could you know you could monitor your temperatures, you could adjust your clock frequencies, but you could you know flip it like this and all of a sudden take it and put it in the five and a quarter day drive adapter, it, yeah, and then put it inside of your chassis and you could just monitor your temperatures. You could see your CPU frequency. You could do a one button overclock. You could change your CPU fan speeds. So it complements not only kind of the bencher and the tweaker and the tuner, but even the guy like myself that I go, I don't bench on the weekends, right? Uh, like some of the guys do, but I overclock my system and I'm an enthusiast, so I want something that maybe complements how I use my system. And that'll so work with that. all. The that ROG, actually, this right? yeah, this will actually work with all our our, uh, our ROG uh, Z87 series motherboards. So this is a really nice hardware accessory, and this is the type of stuff where our energy we take a you know a huge amount of time to try to incorporate these type of design features in there. Um, or this generation, we included RAM disk software in there, right? You know, ROG users they probably tend to put more memory in their system than a normal user, right? How much memory do you probably use? You know, unless you guys are doing serious workflows, maybe four, maybe five gigs. But now you can take all that extra memory and you could run Battlefield 3 from it, or you could load a League of Legends map and p fully, uh, you know, accelerate it through your system memory. Yeah. So, so you so. have to justify maybe buying a 32 gig kit finally. Exactly. Because so I mean, usually for gaming, more than eight to 16 is like you're, too you're much. not you're not using it. It's just yeah. going to be sitting there. So there's a lot of specialized things like that, and there's also points of. Uh, hardware quality innovation you know we're generally each generation gonna say we want the absolute best of the best this is kind of like you know for you guys that are familiar with uh you know high performance labs like skunk works this is what our kind of skunk works division is is we go in there and we say what's the absolute best hardware that we can integrate from year to year and try to put that on there when we first did intel nix it was on ROG. When we first did a digital controller on motherboards, it was on ROG. When we first did advanced per header fan control, it was on ROG. Yeah, it's similar to like the auto market. The craziest stuff happens with the enthusiasts and then yeah. it trickles down into all the other parts yeah. in, the, in the coming years. Yeah. yeah, but I think that you actually see that happen with our motherboard division. That definitely doesn't happen, I think, with all companies. But that's the really cool thing about ROG is you get really the best of the best here and you get a great focus at also having specialized technologies for gamers uh, like the dedicated discrete audio technology that we have called supreme effects mm -hmm. where it's isolated on the motherboard uh, you know that's rolled into boards and that's been there since like 2011 and like game first packet priority software so a lot of really cool stuff on rog cool well if you guys want to see some more videos on rog and just everything in general i'm going to put a table of contents on the screen right now it's not really table contents for this video, but there's a lot of different videos. Uh, you guys can click on the ones that you want to see, overclocking tutorials, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. So um, we got some more videos coming, so watch all of them. You, you guys should know these things. It's good to, it's good to stay in the know. So. Yeah, I definitely agree. And, uh, you know, I'll say that, uh, you know, if you guys maybe have some more questions on the segmentations, you know, feel free to drop me a line inside the forums. I do actually uh, pop up in there and uh, I'll do my best to kind of give you guys more insight as far as really what makes kind of each board different. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, base it on the features. Don't worry about the performance um, or really kind of these key feature points that are going to be present on all the boards. Yeah, so check the link in the description. And that's really cool of you to, you know, come in and answer questions. I'm sure everybody will love that. Yeah. So, all right, we'll see you in the next video.